Well, hey there, LIT. My name's Ed, and what I want to do for you today is walk you through the teaching target using the passage of Haggai chapter 1. We learn this great tool of the teaching target on camp, and it actually is a tool that we can keep on using back home in our own churches. And so I'm hoping this will help you to understand the Bible better for yourself and also to help you uh, teach it to others. That's why we love the teaching target. And let's look at Haggai chapter 1 because I'm teaching that in my church in a couple of weeks' time. And so the first thing we've got to do is we've got to look at context, which is all the things happening around the passage. Context. Now, we've got three parts to our context here. I've started to fill it in for us to help. Uh, We've got the context of the book. We want to think, first of all, what's the literature I'm reading, who wrote it, who's it written to, and when was it written? Now, we get just about all of that in the first verse or the first couple of verses here. We see that it's written when? In the second year of King Darius, the first day of the sixth month. Now, that was 520 B.C. And we see the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. And so that gives us a glimpse into the type of literature it is. It's a prophecy that's coming from God to these people. And uh, these are the people of the post-exile community because it's King Darius. He was a, a Persian king, which means we're coming out of the exile to Babylon back in the promised land. Now, we see as we read on who's speaking. We know it's Haggai speaking the words of the Lord Almighty. He's addressing, we're told exactly, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. They were the leaders of God's community at that point. We know that these events are taking place in Israel, in Jerusalem, because they're all about rebuilding the Lord's house rebuilding the temple and so we know we're li- they're living in and around that and the context before and after we actually see that these this is a community that had been discouraged they'd given up on building the temple and uh, they had uh, actually after coming back 18 years ago under Cyrus they'd started by building the foundations but they'd given up now at the end of chapter one after God Uh, showing that he really is disappointed in their apathy, the way that they've neglected him and his temple. Now God stirs their hearts and they came and began work on the house of the Lord Almighty. So they begin to build it and afterwards in chapter 2, God begins now to uh, remind them of his covenant promises and the great things he's going to do for them. Of course, important as we think about the context is our biblical theology. Think about the Bible as one big story, all about Jesus. Where does Haggai fit into that? Well, it's after the exile, that time of Daniel, when they're in Babylon. They're back in the land now, and it's God speaking to them. So it's before the time of silence and the coming Messiah, Jesus. Now, knowing that is really helpful because it's going to make sense of the kinds of promises that God will make in this book and how they are fulfilled in the Messiah and the end times. That is the context using the teaching target for Haggai chapter 1.